Hey everybody, it's Master Gallon Guys here, bringing my review for American Gods The Secret of Spoons. And this is the last review I'm going to do with this. Because I feel that there's more, that this show goes more for style over substance. Because it just seems that the direction on certain things isn't very clear. And the jumping around sometimes just goes like, what? And I don't need things completely explained to me, but when we take time out to go to another portion, it has to have some connection to what's going on. Otherwise, it's like, why am I watching this? Why is this here? This isn't... This should be in some other portion. So, we start off and we see another Coming to America story, and this time it is set on a slave ship. And... This guy is trying to call to his god, Anasi, and he's like, I can't offer things right now, but if you get me out of here, if you hear me, this is what I will do. And you see, he's trying to talk to this colorful spider, and then this guy comes out with, like, modern-day outfit and, like, jazz music and stuff kind of following him. It was pretty interestingly well done, and I was just like, I didn't know that the gods could kind of do that with, like, a kind of time-traveling aspect. Because he starts telling them about what happens in America, that they're essentially dead men, that you're going to be slaves, and that you're going to be fucked over and everything. And what you should do is get out of here and kill those guys up there. And it's like, yeah, okay. and he's, the thing is, he's riling them up, and he's, like, telling them about all this stuff that's going on, it's like, that's an interesting route. I didn't know that you'd be able to take things from the future and tell them about that and all that kind of stuff. But he's telling them to burn down the ship once they're done killing all the Dutch people up top. And at first I'm like, wow, he's kind of like invoking a very nihilistic kind of thing. And he's like, but won't that kill us too? Because one dude speaks up. He's like, you're already dead men. And I'm like, okay. That's interesting, so he's able to free the one dude, and of course he frees all the other ones, they storm and burn the ship, and we see that the plank gets it to America, and the spider gets off. Now, at first I'm like, wow, that's kind of interesting that he's advocating that they do this kind of nihilistic destruction kind of approach, whereas they could have been able to take the ship and just kind of go back either to where they came from, or kind of make their own kind of thing, and still be able to worship him? Because, and then I started thinking that he wanted them to kind of kill and offer themselves up as a sacrifice, possibly, to feed him. Because that is a big thing that we still don't know and about, like, these gods of how they survive. Be it how do they require a certain level of worship of people doing certain things, how that works. Do they do they have sacrifices and everything? That's what I was thinking with the Anasi guy and the guy that he it wasn't really trying to get them to a nihilistic kind of end, but instead to willingly sacrifice themselves for him and also to kind of get him to this new land, possibly. But then again, I don't know. That was a really interesting and kind of cool part of the show. Everything else kind of just starts to go really weird. Because then we see kind of Shadow go back. We see that Mr. Wednesday is with a girl, with a pizza in his room. And he's like, I'm freaking out, man. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I was lynched. And he's like, well, for being lynched, you look pretty good. And I'm like... Durr. And then that just brings up the point that Mr. Wednesday had nothing to do with saving Shadow, at least directly because he didn't know that he was lynched or whatnot. But then again, we don't know if he did know he was lynched because we don't know the extent of who he is at the moment. And he's like, listen, because he's explaining this dude who's smoking toad skins and everything was saying he was trying to reprogram reality, and it was fucking insane. It's like, listen, an attack on you is an insult on me. Do not take my calm as me not being angry or not having a plan for this. So, 
go and do your thing. So he goes, takes a shower because he had also had to get like staple, not a shower, a bath because he had also had to get staples because he was like fucked up from that lynching and just like kind of like thinking stuff over, taking his wedding band off, having like dreams about his wife. He goes to their house kind of going through. Now here it was interesting seeing him have like different kind of visions of him with his wife throughout the whole house and everything. And then he's kind of boxing everything up of himself and then opens up the box that is his wife's personal effects, goes through, finds the ring, finds her phone, goes through, sees a dick pic from his dude, from his best friend. And of course he had been looking at a wedding picture and he looks back over to the wedding picture and just sees the dick pic. And he goes outside and Mr. W- and he, Mr. Wednesday's like, okay, I'm going to give you some advice that you're not going to like. Just try to promise me that you're not going to hit me. And he's like, all right, I'm not, thanks for the warning. What is it? He's like, I heard that your wife died, uh, with your best friend's cock in her mouth. You are only obligated to feel bad for a certain amount of time. Okay? And I'm like, that's actually pretty good advice. I mean, you're only obligated to feel so bad for this because you got fucked both ways by your best friend and your wife. Yeah, be a little bit bad, but be like, ah, this shit happens. So they go off, and it's revealed that they need to go to Chicago. And it's like, okay, what's going on with this? All right. It's because they went into a town, he was talking with some dude, and it's like, okay, here's a list. Go, go find everything. So he goes off to find stuff. Mr. Wednesday talking to this one dude, and... Of course, Shadow's going through, buying all this stuff, and he gets approached by TVs. And, at least in the credits, she's called media. And she's like, okay, let me offer you a job. I'm sorry about your wife and everything, all that, but I can offer you better stuff. Hey, the stuff with, like, lamb's blood and everything, that's okay, but I get, like, time and everything. (laughs) And that's pretty important. They worship me pretty well. Sorry about how my associate treated you and everything. That's not how I roll. It's like, okay, so I've been these gods and champions or whatnot to work for them or what? I don't know. We still don't know the importance of Shadow, and he doesn't know what's going on either. And granted, that works all right, but it's like, okay, when your favorite character is the one that doesn't know what's going on, and you don't know anybody else doing anything, it's like, okay. So Shadow gets everything because Mr. Wednesday said, listen, here's everything you need. Here's a thousand dollars. I just ask that you skim no more than 5%. He's like, listen, you're paying me. I'm not going to skim. He's like, how can you look after my interest if you won't look after your own? He's like, dang it, whatever. So he goes and he's leaving and this one dude's eyes flash red behind more kind of like flaming eyes, kind of like connected to the buffalo, I believe. So he leaves. He's like, that was successful. Let's get on to Chicago. So they go on to Chicago and they pretty much get up with these Three sisters and this dude. There's their brother. And they're kind of pissed off. They're fortune tellers. And the other dude works in a slaughterhouse. And, or, not in a slaughterhouse. He used to, but times are tough and everything. And, of course, they're like, we'll read your fortunes through coffee and all that. But just let us do the cooking and everything. It's like, okay. And, of course, he's like, my cooking's horrible. And I don't want to learn. So, whatever. It's like, okay, because Shadow's offered to help and everything. It's like, no, we got to do this. We got the food and everything. We're okay. So then, of course, the brother comes in. He's like, hey, why don't you come with us for whatever's going on? Something's important. He's like, this old crazy dude wants me to go with him and die with him. He's like, no. It's like, how about we, all right, then we'll leave. He's like, no, you stay for dinner, then you leave. So as that's going on, we see that the one sister is staying inside her room, not feeling very well and everything, but they had brought gifts, like the binoculars for her interest, uh, kind of, I guess, romantic novels or whatnot, for the one sister, and then the older sister that we've been interacting with the most was booze. And, of course, they brought cigarettes for the brother. And then we get into this whole spiel of 
okay. Talking about his other brother, how he's considered dark and the other one's considered light and all that. And wondering if he wants to play checkers and all that. So they get to a checker game and this stake, they make a bet that if Shadow loses that he will kill him with his hammer. And he brings out the hammer and Shadow can see blood dripping off of it and everything, but in the real world it's done. It's like, what's going on here? What's the significance? And it's like not really apparent, but it's more being done for like art's sake, for style's sake, more than the advancement of the story. So of course they get through the checkers game and of course Shadow loses. And it's like, okay, so he's going to kill him in the morning or whatnot. And that's kind of where the episode ends. We also in there see Vilquist going through more lovers and absorbing and absorbing them inside of her. And we still have no idea what's going on with that because she's doing men, women, and nobody seems to be coming after him. And we still have no clear reason why she's doing it. Because I, we also see this one dude floating with a heart on in like space. And then we see a vagina nebula that kind of leads us back to like Vilquist's room. And it's like, we don't know what's going on. And we don't know what use this is doing. Is this to show us how she feeds or how she gains her power or whatnot? What's going on with this? Why is this important? Why am I watching this? And that's kind of where the whole crux of the problem gets into. I mean, yeah, some of it's kind of interesting, but if you're being enigmatic for artsy purposes and just hiding stuff for the sake of being stylish for your reveals, it's not going to really work that well. It's... I just feel that it's being a little bit too obtuse for its own good and not structuring it in ways that really benefit the audience. The beginning part, showing like the Odin thing in the first episode, and the Mr. Uh, Anasi portion in the beginning of here, that's interesting in showing the gods coming to America and everything. That's pretty cool and kind of shows us stuff about the characters. But once you start getting into the present day and where the action's happening, it just gets to the point where you're only uh, pretty much identifying with Shadow because you don't know what the fuck's going on and you're not getting kind of any clues to what's going on and then you see Bill, of course, doing her thing and it's like, what is this adding and where is this going and it just, it falls flat for me. And that might not fall flat for anybody else, but it just seems that it's more stylish with, like, the presentation and the gore and essentially just fucks in there for the sake of saying fuck instead of actually advancing what the person's trying to say. Like, that doesn't happen in every case. Like, when Shadow's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on and I don't know what the fuck that dude was up to and all that. That worked because Shadow was in a, in a sense, in a state of, like, complete confusion. He had almost been killed. People were somehow killed, and he somehow was alive. And he is coming off of his wife dead and cheating on him with his best friend, who is also dead. And it works. But then it's just, like, kind of seeing a fuck every now and again kind of dropped and just be like, hey, you can say fuck more often. It's like, okay. And I just feel that it's more style over substance and that I'm, it's not going to be the kind of reveals and stuff that will positively impact what's going on. So those are my opinions on the episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.